perspectives for the evolving Turkish energy sector. Dear participants, with this excitement, I will present you the key findings of the Turkey Energy Outlook, with a special emphasis on the key role of energy markets, investments, and emerging energy technologies to support a more secure and a clean energy future for Turkey. Before going into the findings and recommendations provided by the Turkey Energy Outlook, I would like to say a few words on why and how the TEO was developed. At Sabancı University ICAC, we have developed the Turkey Energy Outlook as a reference document for all stakeholders. Turkey Energy Outlook provides a long-term perspective in a dynamic energy system by assessing energy policy and energy technology pathways towards a more sustainable energy future. Turkey Energy Outlook is an independent study. It's an academic study. But at the same time, it reflects energy policy, market, and business realities. Turkey Energy Outlook presents 10 solid policy recommendations to significantly improve Turkey's energy future. And how the Turkey Energy Outlook was developed? We have developed this study based on Turkey's energy policy objectives and analyzed different implications of energy policy choices, progress in energy markets, and technological advancements. We have developed a holistic energy model covering each and every sector and fuel with a detailed accounting in Turkey's growing, evolving energy ecosystem. Turkey Energy Outlook is based on a scenario approach I will mention these scenarios in a minute. Last but not the least, Turkey Energy Outlook is the outcome of a team effort that also benefited from strong stakeholder engagement in what we call as the success triangle of industry, policymaking, and academia. Scenarios, Turkey Energy Outlook provides two scenarios. In both scenarios, we considered five key targets for the future of Turkish energy market. We have defined a more secure, a more efficient, a more competitive, a more technology-driven, and a more sustainable energy future. Reference scenario outlines the continuation of the existing policies, but not necessarily achieves the most ambitious and challenging long-term targets. The alternative scenario is again based on current policies, but also assumes additional policy initiatives. Such initiatives are cost effective, but more challenging. Alternative scenario also benefits more from technology advancements. As a result, this scenario provides wider benefits over the reference scenario in each and every area. During the development of the Turkey Energy Outlook, two major events have occurred. One is the COVID-19 pandemic, and it had various implications on global, regional, and national energy parameters. And the second one is the important news coming from Turkey's exploration and production activities from Black Sea. And the TEO scenarios consider the current and possible future impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic on each sector, each field, and the impact of this very important gas discovery in the Black Sea on Turkey's energy balances. Now going into the key findings of the, the Turkey energy outlook, starting with the power sector, electricity. Electrification will be one of the strongest trends in Turkey, similar to global developments and trends. On power generation, renewables will be the fastest growing technology backed by policies and Turkey's very rich resource base to serve growing electricity demand. Solar and wind, their combined share increases from just over 10% at present to 28% in the reference scenario and to 36% in the alternative scenario in 2040. When we add all other renewables, hydro, geothermal, biomass, all others, in the alternative scenario, renewables represent around 60% of total generation from about 40% at present. Nuclear power will also be an important element of the power generation mix. The second important message is about investments. 
We expect that investment sustainability will remain one of the most important topics in the Turkish power sector, from generation to grids and including energy storage technologies. Annual investment requirements on average, we expect in the reference scenario $8 billion dollars and in the alternative scenario only 10% higher or about $9 million. For a more sustainable power system, it will be important to manage more variable supply and demand patterns. Turkey Energy Outlook projects an increasing role for power grids and technologies to improve power system flexibility in Turkey and investments shifting more to grids and storage technologies. We also expect developments towards a more competitive power market in the coming years to mobilize investments. Transportation, another important sector, and the oil, which represents the majority of transport energy demands. Turkey Energy Outlook projects that the transportation will mainly remain an oil story until 2040. However, Turkey has options to reduce the growth in oil demand and oil imports by using policy choices and several developing technologies. In the alternative scenario, the increase in the oil demand in the next 20 years can reduce to one third of what has been experienced in the past 20 years. This is an important achievement. The chart on the right hand side shows Turkey's demand on main oil products compared to the current refinery production. Diesel. Turkey imports about 40% of its diesel demand from imports. And this represents one of the main items in the energy import bill. So which instruments can be used to lower the gap between the blue bars, which is the demand, and the red bars, the refinery capacity per product? Turkey Energy Outlook elaborates the options in detail. Model shifts from energy and oil intensive road to rail and marine, renewal of the vehicle fleet, accelerated penetration of electricity and natural gas vehicles, fuel taxation, and urban transport planning can all help achieve a better balance of refinery and import slates. As I mentioned, Turkey Energy Outlook reflects the current and potential impacts of the COVID-19, behavioral changes that change energy demand patterns. We provide a sensitivity analysis for the transport sector to investigate potential impacts of such behavioral changes. These may result in permanent changes in high occupancy tra transportation. The largest decrease may occur in jet fuel demand until 2040. However, when we look at the total picture, we expect that the total oil products demand would not be greatly affected until 2040. Natural gas. We expect that natural gas demand will increase in all sectors except for power generation. And this will bring many benefits especially in terms of environmental performance. Increase in natural gas demand mainly comes from buildings and industry. We expect increasing use of gas in transportation as well. Natural gas will increasingly substitute coal and oil products in these sectors. And recent natural gas discoveries, as I said, a very important development for the Turkish energy sector. The TEO was able to reflect those developments to ensure all relevant projections. Share of lo local resources in total natural gas demand increases over 50% in the alternative scenario. But this is based on the current knowledge and estimations and further developments in the TEO timeframe can increase this ratio. And a key message about the natural gas market, we believe that global and regional gas market dynamics, Turkey is developing and expanding natural gas infrastructure, expiry calendar of the existing long-term contracts, and increase in local production based on these discoveries all support a more competitive natural gas market. This year, we would see very sol solid developments in this direction. Energy efficiency and fuel shifts. We expect that a more technology-driven and sustainable demand side can be achieved by using energy efficiency potential and enabling fuel shifts. Here, Four major energy demand sectors are shown. Buildings, industry, transportation, and agriculture. In all these sectors, energy efficiency would be the major energy source in the coming years. 
in line with Turkey's economic and social growth, energy demand will increase in these sectors. However, the efficiency-focused policies and technologies limit this growth. And fuel shifts, changes in the breakdown of final energy demand, electrification, gasification, and wider use of renewable energy, especially in the alternative scenario. This results in much lower use of oil and coal in buildings and some industries. And these developments bring multiple benefits in terms of energy imports, in terms of environmental performance, a lower carbon footprint, and better air quality. Turkey Energy Outlook provides a detailed discussion of these dynamics on a sector and field basis. We believe that technology and digitalization will play a key role to support energy efficiency and fuel shift gains. These gains can further be leveraged by new business models and diverse financing in all end use sectors. Turkey Energy Outlook presents many benefits to support efficient growth of Turkey's energy economy. In the book, you may find many details, but here I would like to share with you a few key important indicators. First, the primary energy supply and final energy demand. Share of renewables as a primary energy source increases from about 15% to over 30% in the alternative scenario in 2040. Electrification and gasification, these fuels each represent about 30% of final energy demand in 2040. A more secure and sustainable power generation portfolio, share of local resources in total electricity generation, from about 60% at present up to 90%, including the contribution from nuclear power, especially with growth in renewables and with local gas production. Another key indicator about environmental performance, greenhouse gas emissions from the energy sector, emissions per unit energy use, a 30% reduction until 2040 in the alternative scenario. Technology. Every aspect of Turkey's developing energy system provides opportunities to advance energy technology R&D and to become an exporter of advanced energy technologies. Turkey Energy Outlook reflects increased localization of global energy technology trends. And promising energy technology choices are discussed to develop a domestic manufacturing industry while advancing through energy transition. Key technology areas from our perspective will be renewable energy, energy storage, batteries and others, electric vehicles, hydrogen production and use, nuclear power, including small modular reactors, carbon capture from air, and advanced data analytics and digitalization. Turkey can become a producer and exporter of these technologies, and these technologies will also be instrumental towards achieving near zero or even net zero emissions beyond 2040. Before going into the 10 recommendations, I would like to highlight some, some key items that are linked to further development of energy markets and expanding investments. First, Turkey's growth fundamentals, very strong. To name a few, population growth, young population, urbanization, urban transformation, industrialization, increasing mobility. Turkey's per capita energy and power demand are still at less than a half of the OECD average. Energy markets, especially the power and gas markets, both are in transition towards more competitive structures. Power market is advancing. Natural gas market still lags behind the power market. But as, as I said, we would see very important developments starting from this year. High potential areas, renewable energy, energy efficiency, many other clean energy choices. EMPA investments. As I just presented, advancement potential in many different energy technologies and digitalization to support each and every development in Turkey's growing energy economy. These drivers will all enable a stronger energy economy towards a more secure, efficient, technology-driven, competitive, and sustainable energy future. Now I will present you the 10 recommendations they are all detailed in the TEO book.
First of all, investments. We recommend an attractive investment framework to mobilize investments for meeting increasing demand for modern, modern energy services while achieving a more secure, efficient, and sustainable energy future. Energy markets, power and natural gas markets. We recommend faster progress towards competitive power and gas markets with wider private sector participation, including cost-reflective prices while addressing the social dimension, customer dimension. Power sector. We recommend increased renewable and nuclear power with more flexibility in the power grid, including demand side services. Energy efficiency in general. We recommend increased energy and fuel efficiency across all sectors supported by fuel shifts towards further electrification and larger use of renewable energy. Buildings and industries. We recommend strong policy initiatives, market-based, innovative financing and business models to exploit the energy efficiency potential in buildings and industries. Transportation. We recommend faster uptake of electric vehicles and Turkey's recharging infrastructure and faster retirement of older, inefficient and polluting transportation vehicles. Again on transportation, we recommend increased model shifts from energy and oil intensive road to rail and marine. We recommend data-driven urban transportation planning to ensure effective public transit capital investments and measures to discourage private automobile travel. EMP, we recommend sustained exploration and production efforts and investments to discover and produce more domestic oil and gas. Digitalization, we recommend increased uptake of digitalization and advanced data analytics along the energy supply and demand chain. And finally, technologies, we recommend increased innovation, R&D and manufacturing of advanced energy technologies. Turkey Energy Outlook is a first of a kind, comprehensive and forward-looking overview of Turkey's energy economy. But the TEO provides much more than modeling scenarios and policy recommendations. It presents a particular focus on the emerging energy commodity markets. It provides an in-depth summary of Turkish energy infrastructure and key energy using industries. It also presents a comprehensive overview of Turkish energy markets and related regulations. Therefore, it is a unique reference for the investment and technology community interest for the Turkish energy sector. As I said at the outset, Turkey Energy Outlook was benefited from stakeholder engagement. On this occasion, on behalf of the ICAC TEO project team, I would like to thank again to those names. We have a long list of acknowledgements in the book. And I would like to thank you all for your interest. You can download the report and its executive summary from our website, and you can also use the QR code on the screen that links you directly to the related web page. Thanks again, Ariane, Civis Embassy, the Civis Chamber of Commerce for this special occasion. My colleagues have been collecting the questions and I think we will go into the Q&A session very shortly. Thank you. Um, thank you very much uh, from my side as well, uh, Bora Bey, for this um, very comprehensive and also insightful speech. And we really learned a lot about uh, the Turkish energy mix. And um, I think also about a environment, uh, environment friendly way to improve it uh, until 2040. I would like to tell the audience again, uh, you will have time as well now to type in some more questions and Bora will come back after a short break, a one minute break, and will answer your questions directly. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks again. We had many questions. Uh, my colleagues uh, tried to categorize them. So I will start with the power sector, renewables, including nuclear power. Uh, first of all, uh, the power demand in Turkey will increase uh, higher than the demand for uh, primary energy, energy services. As I said, electrification will be one of the strongest 
uh, trends in the power market. We expect that solar power will become the leading technology uh, towards the end of the TO time horizon. And together with wind, will represent about 50% of total installed capacity in Turkey. For hydro, there's a question about the uh, volatility in hydro power generation uh, due to the impact of climate change. Yes, this, this could be an issue for the Turkish power sector in the coming years. And the, in the TO scenarios, uh, we reflected uh, those parameters and we would expect uh, lower capacity factors from uh, Turkey's hydro installed capacity in the next two decades. So the Turkish installed capacity development, as I said, will be mostly based on renewables, but supplemented by nuclear power and uh, natural gas and coal. EV is one of the most important technologies addressed in the Turkey energy outlook. And yes, there will be focus on hydrogen as well. We expect that there will be developments on that side uh, together with a strategy, a roadmap uh, towards utilization of hydrogen, including its production from uh, green electricity from Turkey's rich wind and solar resources. And also in the TEO, we proposed a technology that would benefit uh, from Turkey's local coal resources using ca carbon capture and storage technologies. This, this would be also interesting. On energy efficiency, Turkey, as I said, Turkey has a significant potential. We see that these energy performance contracts will have an important role. And we would expect that this, this model can be multiplied in each and every end use sector. For example, in uh, starting with the public buildings, but also in commercial buildings, in residential buildings, in several industrial sectors, we, we see a strong potential in electric motors, in buildings, insulation, in electric appliances, and uh, policies, technologies, and uh, fiscal measures will all improve the energy efficiency in the Turkish energy market. Some questions are related to the investment climate in Turkey, uh, the market development and investment climate in Turkey. Uh, as I said, Turkey has robo robust growth uh, dynamics. Uh, young population, population growth, industrialization, urbanization, urban transformation, increasing mobility. When you look at the per capita electricity consumption, uh, per capita vehicle ownership, Turkey lags behind the European Union, Union average or the OECD average. So there's a good potential. It is important to realize this potential with an efficient growth, taking into consideration the environmental impact, the climate dimension. So we expect that Turkish energy system will evolve towards a more sustainable future with investments allocated to clean energy technologies in, in the power sector, mostly in wind, solar, and other renewables. Uh, supported by nuclear power and uh, in other end use sectors, again, renewable energy, apart from its use in electricity generation, direct use of renewable energy, use of Turkey's solar geothermal resources directly for heating or cooling purposes and linked to district heating opportunities, using heat pump technologies, other technologies uh, to utilize Turkey's rich renewable resource base in an efficient way in the future. And uh, again, about the climate impacts, uh, there's a question about carbon tax. These, these scenarios, uh, the carbon tax is not included, but uh, we presented the uh, potential impact of any carbon tax on, on the cost of power generation technologies. And addition of carbon tax or implementation of carbon tax or similar measures in the Turkish power system will further favor the competence of wind, solar, and other renewables. And, this, and in, in that way, we, we may see some further increases uh, in, in, in generation from renewables. And we may see, for example, more than 
the 36% that I presented for wind and solar combined share. There's a question from Professor Carmine De Filio, one of the lead authors of the Turkey Energy Outlook, uh, now from the United States. The government policies since the launch of the Turkey Energy Outlook, yes, they confirmed the progressive vision of the alternative scenario, especially the transition to net zero emissions at some time, for sure, after the time horizon of the TO projections. In the TO alternative scenario, we showed that the absolute emissions will peak before 2040. And if Turkey will implement some additional measures and benefiting from technology developments, uh, this peaking might be earlier and Turkey can achieve uh, near zero and net zero emissions definitely in a time frame beyond 2040. I don't know if I have missed any question. I cannot see on my screen now, but Ariane. Um, I think you have answered a great bulk of the questions. There was one more about uh, the tenders. Um, let me see if I can see it again. Uh, now it just went down a bit. Um, I just read it to you. Uh, my question is regarding solar energy tenders in Turkey. As mentioned during your presentation, renewable energies should be increased in the market. However, we observe non-competitive prices and tenders are being postponed. What are some actions Turkish government can take to provide more incentives for foreign and local developers? That will be one more question in the chat that I haven't heard the answer yet. Yes, this is, a, this is an important question indeed. Uh, the, the, for, for both solar and wind, uh, Turkey uh, will continue with two important models. One is called the YECA model, including uh, local components manufacturing, and the other one is the YECTEM. Uh, the YECTEM tariffs uh, were just released uh, starting from uh, the beginning of July this year. And uh, I think this question is uh, referring to the YECA uh, tenders. Yes, uh, there had been some cancellations, but um, recently this mini ECA tenders, uh, when combined up to a gigawatt, uh, was announced, and uh, we will we will monitor the progress and we will we will see the uh, tender results there. But what we observe in the market is that there's a, a decrease in uh, capital costs with technology improvement. Turkey has a rich uh, base in solar power. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, it is important to assure uh, sustainability in these investments to attract finance. So I think that there, there will be a balance, balance in between. The technological progress on one side, uh, yielding cost reductions, and also uh, bankability of these projects to sustain the growth in the, in the power sector based on those developing renewable energy resources. Okay, thank you. I found another question about the heating in buildings. Um, uh, this uh, person asked, heating in buildings consume a lot of energy. The current practices in Turkey does not favor energy efficiency for heating. How do you think the government should prioritize regulatory changes to foster EE in heating of buildings based on your findings in your report? Yes, uh, as I as I touched very briefly, uh, this is again very important. Uh, Turkey has a high potential. We believe that the highest potential energy efficiency potential lies in 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 in, in building insulation. So uh, we we had a look a detailed uh, look into the uh, Turkey's uh, building stock, and we we saw that uh, the majority of the stock is inefficient. So there there is an urgent need. Uh, to improve energy efficiency in the building sector, not only for heating, but also for, for, for cooling. So the, the overall, overall performance improvement uh, in, across all, all buildings in Turkey. Uh, there has been some positive steps. Uh, the government had some actions uh, starting from public buildings uh, to improve uh, energy efficiency potential. And I believe this will uh, demonstrate uh, the benefits 
uh, of uh, building insulation and uh, this should be multiplied in, uh, as I said in all other uh, uh, buildings in commercial buildings and uh, more importantly across the residential uh, buildings because the huge potential uh, lies in residential building stock in Turkey. Uh, energy efficiency performance uh, model we believe will be very effective but uh, there's an increasing awareness about this model, about the uh, importance of energy efficiency, about the benefits of energy efficiency, but there are some barriers and some of, some of the barriers are very much linked with uh, the access to finance. So uh, it is important to facilitate uh, finance or to, to think about uh, new financement model, finance models or business models to attract investments into building insulation. Thank you. Very interesting. And I think it's also discussed in Switzerland. And I think we also give uh, incentives to house owners um, 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 tax-wise, so they would uh, consider to, to, to um, make these changes that are um, necessary. I found one more question that I didn't hear uh, the answer as well. It comes from Geneva. And um, he says, I missed the beginning, so I do not know if the issue of nuclear power was tackled. Any possible cooperation with Switzerland on this issue? I think that's an interesting question. It's a very broad question, I have to say, at the same time. Uh I'm sure there, 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 there is a, there's a potential for cooperation uh, between Turkey and each and every uh, country having nuclear power expertise. Uh, as you know, there's, there's a project going on at Akkuyu site uh, with Russia, and uh, we may see further projects uh, in some other locations in Turkey. But uh, the Swiss companies or, 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 or other companies I believe, uh, can always be part of those big projects. Uh, thank you very much. And I found one question those, that was transmitted, I think, via email. Um, Turkey shares with Switzerland and Austria to have a large part of its electricity produced from hydropower generation. However, the global warming is a threat that would lower annual rain and snow quantities in the Mediterranean countries, to what extent do you expect the climate change would affect hydropower generation from the existing reservoirs in Turkey in the coming decades? I think it's a very interesting question also for Switzerland. Uh, really, for Switzerland, I would not have the answer, but I mean, about 60% of our energy uh, consumption comes from hydropower plants. So I think climate change and less water is actually a very important issue. I agree. Uh, there was a similar question. Uh, uh, the, the, the hydro is also one of the most important elements of Turkish power generation, depending on the uh, wet season or dry season, contributes to uh, 25 to 30 percent of uh, Turkish power generation. But uh, Turkey has already utilized uh, more than half of it is uh, hydro potential. In the coming years, we expect that uh, there will be increases in, in hydro capacity. But as I said, uh, due to this, uh, this uh, climate impact, uh, lower hydrology, uh, we may expect that uh, lower capacity factors uh, would be an issue uh, to get less electricity from uh, the same installed capacity. So th this is an important issue. That's why the other technologies, especially other renewable energy technologies uh, led by wind and solar, we believe will be very important uh, to, 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 to keep the share of domestic uh, fuel supply in power generation higher. Uh, thank you very much. I saw that there are two more uh, new questions that came in. Um, the first one is, are there good opportunities for integrating transmission networks with neighboring countries to make the power sector more flexible? Yes, the fle flexibility is, is, is one of the most important themes discussed 
in the Turkey energy outlook. There, there are many teams uh, discussed in the Turkey energy outlook, but in the power sector, one of the most significant trends uh, will be in, uh, the increasing need for flexibility. And we el elaborated those flexibility uh, choices and options for Turkey. Uh, on the supply side, uh, we will see more variable uh, generation due to the intermittence of wind and solar. And on the demand side, uh, these very ex exciting uh, developments with the e-mobility growth of electric vehicles, but also changing demand patterns, uh, more air conditioning, for example, in line with uh, increasing economic and social welfare. So we will see more variable supply, more variable demands, and th this needs to be managed in a system perspective in the, in the power sector. Uh, demand side uh, should be uh, part of uh, this scheme uh, to, uh, to adjust the loads according to the system needs, but there should be some incentives, uh, some support mechanisms or some regulations uh, to bring the demand side, the customers, uh, to contribute in the flexibility needs of the power system. And on top of that, uh, Turkey has already uh, interconnections. Uh, the main interconnection or the main uh, direction is integration with the European network and SOE network. And uh, but depending on the technicalities uh, in the future with increasing cross-border trade, for sure, this, this could contribute to uh, to the flexibility, not only in Turkey, but uh, in the in the neighboring countries. Thank you very much for this answer. The last question I see uh, from the audience. Uh, please type in more. We still have a few minutes. Um, how much uh, you think the electricity distribution networks are ready to cope with the increases? increasing EV charging installations in Turkey? Yes, uh, electric vehicles, as, as Doğan Bey mentioned, uh, this, this, this will be the main uh, study this year uh, from ICAC, and we already started to work on it. And we expect uh, great developments in this, in this area. Uh, there are uh, government initiatives, uh, industrial orientations, uh, private sector invest investments and uh, increasing uh, customer interest. And this uh, EV growth should, should be supplemented with uh, charging infrastructure. Uh, and uh, on charging infrastructure, Turkey is uh, becoming very advanced. And when you compare uh, Turkey with, with many countries in Europe, uh, charging uh, number of charging installations per electric vehicles, for example, Turkey already stands in a in a good uh, good position, and uh, this uh, growth of the charging uh, infrastructure needs to be managed, uh, as the question proposed, uh, with the, with the power grid, especially with the distribution grid planning. But we observe that the distribution. Uh, uh, system players, the uh, industry, and the regulator also consider this as one of the important pathways uh, for uh, evolving uh, Turkish power grid. So believe, we believe that the, this, this, this can be managed uh, with, uh, with uh, technical measures and also with uh, proper regulations. Thank you very much. And um, there is one more question. Uh, Mr. Shekigura, could you tell more about in the field of EE in buildings? Is it enough what the government bodies are doing or saying? What do you think about incentives for EE applications for buildings in Turkey compared EU countries compared to in EU countries? Yes, uh, when you compare the progress uh, in Turkey, uh, I think it's fair to say that Turkey lags behind, uh, still lags behind uh, compared to the EU average in that area. Uh, there had been steps, but these steps need, need, need to be accelerated uh, to achieve wider energy efficiency gains, especially, uh, as I said before, to attract investments uh, for building insulation and to improve the energy efficiency performance class of the buildings. 
to and to converge to uh, the best practices in the European Union. There's a there's a way to go there, and that's why we highlighted this this issue uh, in the TEO. This is this is also one of the most important themes discussed in the Turkey Energy Outlook. Thank you very much. Um, one more question. How do you see the biomass energy potential in Turkey? Do you think the policy taken by the government is adequate? Uh, biomass uh, potential is, uh, let me explain uh, this uh, twofold. Uh, first one is the biomass use for power generation. Uh, Turkey uh, has already a sizable capacity of power generation from biomass. Uh, and uh, th there's a potential uh, at least to double double this. And uh, there's biomass potential uh, in, in sectors other than uh, power generation. For example, in, in, in cement industry, uh, there's a good potential uh, to use biomass as an alternative fuel. And this would bring uh, several uh, benefits, the, uh, especially to lower the imports and also to improve the environmental performance. And also uh, another one could be uh, the uh, uh, removal of uh, the use of uh, traditional biomass uh, in rural areas. Uh, what we see is, uh, this is this is marginal, but still uh, we, we see in the rural areas uh, that uh, the traditional biomass is still used uh, as, an, as a primary energy resource. But Turkey has potential uh, to transform this use uh, from uh, traditional forms of biomass towards uh, more modern uh, use of uh, biomass. For example, biogas facilities uh, donated with the state-of-the-art technologies. And uh, this, is, this is very much related to the uh, efficient uh, or sustainable use of uh, energy in the agriculture sector and the adjacent uh, sectors. And uh, on the agriculture sector, uh, again, this, this, this is also detailed in the Turkey Energy Outlook book, but uh, Turkey has a good, good potential, for example, to lower the uh, power demand need for irrigation purposes. Turkey has a good potential uh, to utilize distributed generation in some rural areas. Turkey has a good potential uh, to utilize mini grids or mi microgrids Uh, to achieve more modern and efficient energy services. Then uh, one more question from the audience. Um, there are great opportunities for renewable energy and energy efficiency, and the government could set more ambitious goals compared to the current ones. What are the biggest obstacles against setting more ambition, ambitious goals? Is long-term planning difficult in Turkey? with a critical one? Uh, Long-term planning is, is, is important. Uh, I agree with the, with the, with the question. Uh, this, this, is, this, this is not so easy because uh, we, are, we are living in a dynamic uh, framework, but a, a long-term uh, framework is needed. Uh, I, I think that was, uh, that was one of the unique contributions of the, of the TEO as you also, also mentioned. Uh, this is a first of a kind study. This is not a uh, policy document. This is not a formal document. This is an independent study, but uh, this is a, a long-term projection uh, taken into consideration different uh, dynamics uh, within all these uncertainties, but uh, coming up uh, with, uh, with uh, numbers, uh, quantitative analysis, and uh, to see that how the, the Turkish energy economy can evolve under uh, certain conditions, under certain policies with uh, certain technologies. And uh, a, a formal document uh, from the policymaker, I believe would be very useful, again, uh, in a long-term perspective, uh, with, uh, especially with targets, uh, solid targets, For example, uh, solid targets uh, for the uh, share of renewables in power generation uh, or solid targets for uh, the capacity growth, again, in power generation, especially in renewables. 
other sustainable energy sources. Those uh, solid targets uh, numbers, uh, I think, uh, would be very useful uh, for for the investors to plan themselves uh, their investment plans to contribute uh, to a more efficient, a more sustainable energy future in Turkey. Thank you very much. Uh, it was a very interactive uh, webinar now. Uh, to round it up with one last question, I see we are getting to the end. I would like to ask you, what would be the key developments if you look um, a more a short-term perspective in 2021 in this year that we should keep an eye on or that we should watch this year? So, uh, I think on the demand side, uh, we, we are going to see uh, further demand recovery in power, in natural gas, in oil products. Uh, I think it all depends on the, on the uh, COVID-19 situation, but we might expect uh, well recovery in demand, at least uh, compared to the very difficult, very tough uh, year 2020. In power generation, I think it will be important uh, to... Uh, see the progress uh, in those YECA tenders, uh, the new YECTAM tariffs, uh, to see uh, the uh, investor interest and uh, to monitor the progress in uh, renewable energy projects. This will be very important. Uh, on the gas side, as I said, uh, this is, I think this is the right time uh, for Turkey uh, to move towards a uh, more competitive uh, natural gas markets and we see uh, some early signs of that so uh, we would expect uh, some solid uh, achievements uh, to further liberalize the natural gas market uh, in Turkey this year and of course this will take uh, some time so we should we should uh, we should expect uh, further developments in the next few years uh, to to achieve uh, uh, more competitive natural gas market, and uh, maybe in the future, uh, developing Turkey as a regional uh, trading hub in the region, because because Turkey's uh, uh, fundamentals are strong, and Turkey's energy uh, infrastructure, uh, both in power and gas, uh, has been advancing, especially in the in the gas gas market with the current favorable dynamics. Uh, globally, regionally, and as I uh, presented the uh, expiry of the existing contracts, they all support uh, a more competitive, a more transparent uh, natural gas market development in Turkey. And I think uh, new technologies and electric vehicles, uh, e-charging, uh, and many others, uh, I think we should expect uh, good news, uh, developments, and uh, and uh, the clean energy development, I think, uh, will be the main story uh, starting from uh, this year ahead uh, to uh, to consider or to address uh, the uh, global developments as well, the regional developments, and also uh, to to better utilize uh, Turkey's potential, as we discussed today, in renewable energy in energy efficiency, in many other clean energy technologies. Uh, th th this, is th this is, again, a good year to start uh, that kind of development. Well, uh, thank you very much, Bora Bey. Uh, I think we learned really a lot. Thank you very much for giving all these uh, very brilliant answers uh, to all of these questions of the audience. And I want to round up the webinar. We are a bit late, but we also started a bit late. So I would say uh, we are on time. Thank you to you, Bora. Also, thank you to Doan and to the whole team of ICAC who made this uh, webinar happen. Also uh, to the Swiss Chamber of Turkey. They supported us not only with their technology, but uh, in the whole organization. And last but not least, I would like to thank uh, my dear colleagues at the Swiss Embassy for helping to organize this webinar. Without them, it wouldn't have been possible to do it. Uh, usually, we would now hand over a gift uh, a, a, from Switzerland. Um, it is not possible. And that's why we uh, hand over virtually 
uh, a contribution to WWF in your name, Bora, and uh, Doan also for a more sustainable um, and environmental friendly uh, future and more biodiversity in the world and in Turkey. Thank you very much. And I wish everybody, thank you also for your participation. And I wish everybody a very nice rest of the afternoon. Take care. I hope to see you again at the next three country business webinar. Stay healthy and see you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.